It's 2024 and an election year, which means it's time to forget everything that happened in the past. But for a moment, let's go back and remember the hundreds, the thousands, in fact, the tens of thousands that broke the algorithms to speak and remember the issues that actually matter, the issues that are affecting us even as we speak today. Let's go back and remember the top short messages of 2023. You put in all the risk, you put in all the time, you have to deal with the taxes, the business laws, you have to deal with the regulations of New York State. What's the limit on how much you can make? Because Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez somehow seems to know how much money you should make. She wants to tell you, and she is telling you, that she can determine how much money you deserve. No matter how hard you work, no matter how good your business is or how necessary it is, she's going to tell you how much money you make. She is your boss. That's what AOC wants you to think. That's what the progressive and the democratic national socialists, that's what they want you to believe. As a congresswoman who is elected and swears an oath to serve you, to serve the public, and she wants to be your boss. Gee, does that sound like a great idea? A lot of people who don't understand what is actually going on or what's happened historically will then argue with each other about what's going on in a, a land far away from here. I want to I wanna be very upfront. I can't stand Hamas. I, I hate and, and absolutely detest Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis uh, and Iran. Never hidden that in a day in my life. I cannot stand their perspective and their actions. They're terrorists, and I'm happy to see those organizations disappear. That being said, that doesn't mean Israel is a perfect nation. Hmm. They're not. They have problems just like every other nation in the world. Yeah. Um, it is also a credible fact that of the Middle East, the most stable, the most democratic nation in the Middle East is Israel. The Palestinians have more rights than they have ever been provided by any other nation in the Middle East to this day. And we have constantly seen that throughout this conflict, going back to the 70s, we have seen that Israel has constantly said, let's live together, not necessarily side by side, but you know, you have your space, we have our space, we will live with you. And we have constantly seen the Palestinians, especially with the influence from Iran after the 1980s, have said, no, we want to genocide you. This is the reason why the two-state option doesn't work. You can't have two nations occupying the same land or mm -hmm. next to each other, where one of them is saying, we will coexist, and the other one is saying, we're going to genocide you. That is mm -hmm. fundamental to understanding what is going on down there. Okay. Barstool Sports. So Barstool, major sports publication, and their founder, Dave Portnoy, is most known for his pizza reviews, where he goes out, reviews pizza, gives it a score. Very, very popular online, right? Now, he was going to Massachusetts, and in Massachusetts, he went to this one small pizza place, didn't care for the pizza. The owner comes out, right? And I want to cover this because it highlights where the culture war is at and what the far left tactics are and how you kind of absolutely destroy the far left, right? So this guy comes out and he's attacking Dave. He's like, you've done nothing for small businesses. You've only hurt them. Uh, brings up a New York Times hit piece. And Dave is clearly not a Democrat, right? He's friends with Tucker Carlson. He's appeared on Tucker before and everything like that. Dave absolutely dismantles him. And he goes, other than the hit piece, what have I done for small businesses? I can name eight, right? Absolutely destroys the guy. Epic fail on their part. Number 10. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel. Check out our Patreon link in the description below for exclusive content. Now, today I'm going to be talking about John Fetterman and the issue that he currently faces and why it's a great example of how progressive activists absolutely demolish people, okay? John Fetterman is a far-left senator. It's pretty well-known, very progressive, very liberal. However, recently, 
he's faced a lot of problems with his stance over Israel, which caused a lot of his base, his progressive base, who voted for him, to absolutely turn on him. And it doesn't matter that they agree with 99% of what John Fetterman stands for and says. It's that 1% they care about that they're going to absolutely tear him apart for and why it's going to be very, very hard for re-election. And it just goes to show that's how the left thinks. And that's the progressive activist mindset, right? It doesn't matter if you agree 99% of the policies this person has. They will focus on that 1% and absolutely turn on you. The left eats their own. Number nine. Today, be sure to comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel. Check out our Patreon. Link in the description below for exclusive content. Hit that notification for every time a J-Rest break comes out. Today, I'm going to be talking about Ron DeSantis's biggest blunder I see so far in the campaign. And that was his comment calling a lot of people listless vessels. Okay, so Ron was doing an interview and what he was trying to say, and I kind of get what he's trying to say, it was, oh, all these people who are MAGA and they're Trump voters, if you don't support Trump, you're a rhino, it doesn't matter how conservative you are, and that just leads to a party of listless vessels, you need diversity. Ron, this is your basket of deplorables moment. You're ticking off your entire base. At this point, you are wasting money. And I've said that multiple times on the show. End it. Epic fail, Ron. Today, epic fail on their part. Number eight. Comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel. Check out our Patreon link in the description below for exclusive content. Today, I'm going to be talking about the incident that happened in Colorado involving a 12-year-old boy. Okay, what did this 12-year-old do? Well, he had a Gadsden flag patch on his backpack. And he got kicked out of class for it. Okay, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but it gets even dumber. Okay, because then the school administrator calls in the mother and he berates the mother saying that patch has to do with slavery and that's why that he cannot wear it at school. Okay, despite the fact the Gadsden flag, the don't tread on me flag has to do with the American Revolution. Okay, it is used primarily from the American Revolution. In 1775, it was created. This is what happens when people don't know their history and listen just to mainstream media and hear flag bad. Oh, blah, 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 blah. epic fail. Number seven. To those who don't follow the news, don't follow international news, and are just going to hear a headline about this, he makes it sound like there's only five hostages to bring home. Now, Part of the reason why he would do that is the law of low expectations. If he were to get three hostages, the two women and one child, based on just this coverage, most Americans would think all American hostages have been returned home. That America's involvement in Israel-Hamas war would be at an end. That isn't even close to accurate. There are four times as many Americans still being held that he has not mentioned, that he has not named. He refuses to give us the full scope and the fact that the reason why America is involved in this is Americans were killed and Americans were taken hostage. He has limited his culpability and the negative impact on him politically, but that is highly inaccurate. Number six. New collector beer can sold by conservative dad's ultra-right beer, has sold half a million units in 12 hours. What's going on, guys? That's the J-Rest Break. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel. Check out our Patreon link in the description below. So Bud Light has absolutely botched their brand. They went woke, and they lost a ton of money. So there's been a hole in the market. Company comes in, decides to do the opposite goes conservative, goes anti-woke, and their latest can features the Trump mugshot. Now, a while back ago, I talked about how the mugshot was going to backfire. It was going to be a fundraising tool, and that's exactly what this beer can does. 10% of it goes to legal funds in Georgia for the Trump electors, okay? It absolutely backfired. They thought they were going to embarrass Trump, and they actually raised money for him. So good on the conservative beer, Epic fail for woke brands. Number five. Why are there 30,000 Americans who have been abandoned? Why are there hundreds of Americans being tortured and or held hostage in four different countries right now? 
Why is the future of America at risk with terrorists running across America's border? Do you, do you believe that Iran wants to destroy the United States? They do. And Mr. Warwick, do you think they would want to destroy it? Iran wants to dominate the Middle East, and they see the United States as the chief impediment to that goal. Do they want to destroy us? They know they can't destroy us. Do they want to? They, they, that's there's not, a problem. See, no, folks no, like there's a problem. Do you think they want to destroy Israel? Do you have any doubt they want to destroy Israel? Oh, on that I agree with. You. Well, very good. So we agree on one one thing. All four of us do. Okay, very good. And and this administration is giving them the money to make them let them do it. Thank you. Now you'll back. Number four. Today, 26 people tried to hijack JFK Airport in their attempt to continue to fund Hamas. Now, news media that graduated from Harvard, that graduated from Cornell University, they're going to try and reword this. They're going to try and convince you that it was just a protest. No, it was an act of force. This was an attempt to try and coerce you to give your money to Hamas, a terrorist organization that started a war that resulted in 34 Americans being killed that have over 22 Americans that are being tortured and sexually abused as we speak. This is where they want your money to go. This is what they want to coerce you to do. How long will we continue to accept this and not call it what it is? This is a crime. These are criminals. This is evil. Number three, the New York Times must think you're an absolute idiot. In the seventh paragraph of their article, the New York Times tells you that the students had to be locked into a library for their safety to protect them as people were banging on the doors and screaming at them and shouting epithets. And because in the eighth paragraph, the reporter and the editor think you're an idiot that you don't understand English, they tell you there was no threat. No one was threatened. No, they were just banging on the door because it was a happy day. They were just screaming at these students trying to get in, trying to break down the door, trying to break down the wall because they just wanted to give them hugs. It's stupid. This is insane. Is this really the best that the New York Times can provide? It's called bias. Number two. What the hell is Kathy Hochul talking about? This state is so incredibly diverse that there's more to New York than Statue of Liberty and Niagara Falls, that there are vast, vast thousands of acres of great farmland that's producing food for not just New Yorkers, but literally for the world. Diversity in the number of farms, diversity in the farmers, diversity in the food, the landscape. What the hell is she talking about? It's just a useless buzzword because that's what Democrats do. They say empty things that make no sense. Stop and listen to what she said. Democrats clap. The news media glances over it because buzzword, you can't question it. And that's the reason why New York is failing. It's why since 2010, New York State has lost over 12.5% of the number of farms in the state. Number one. Imagine if the government knew that the risk of 9-11 increased, not percent, 46 times. Okay, for the record, in fiscal year, let's say, 20, you had three uh, at the southwest border encounters with people on the terrorist watch list. So far this year, it's 140. Can you give us the whereabouts of those 140? Congressman, let me say this. The safety and security of the American people is our highest so prove it to me. Imagine if the government didn't know where 140 potential 9-11s were at this moment. 140 people on the terrorist watch list so far this year. For the record, would you please give us the status of each of those individuals? Congressman, I would be pleased to provide you with that information with respect to the individuals encountered at the Southwest border. You don't have to imagine because the Biden-Harris administration doesn't care.